The Vishnukundina dynasty was an Indian imperial power controlling the Deccan, Orissa and parts of South India during the 5th and 6th centuries, carving land out from the Vakataka Empire. It played an important role in the history of the Deccan during the 5th and 6th centuries. The area north of the Godavari, Kalinga, became independent. The area south of the Krishna River fell to the Pallavas. The Vishnukundan reign came to an end with the conquest of the eastern Deccan by the Chalukya, Palakeshin II. Palakeshin appointed his brother Kuba Vishnuvardhana as viceroy to rule over the conquered lands. Eventually Vishnuvardhana declared his independence and started the eastern Chalukya dynasty. Origin Vishnukundina is a Sanskritized name for Vinukanda. The early rulers of the dynasty migrated to the west in search of employment and under the Vakatakas they might have attained feudatory status. During the reign of Madhava Varma, they became independent and conquered coastal Andhra from the Salankayanas and established their capital at Dendaluru near Aluru, West Godavari district. Chronology The Vishnukundan reign might be fixed between the end of the Salankayana and the rise of the eastern Chalukyan power in 624. Some historians mention Vishnukundan's reign was from 420 to 624, while some other historians say their reign was from early 5th century to the 7th century. Govinda Varma I Govinda Varma I took the imperial title of Maharaja and his son Madhav Varma I was the founder of the power based on grants from Sriparvata and Indrapalagata. <laughs> Madhav Varma I The reign of Madhav Varma c. 420 c. 455. He was the founder of the Vishnukundina power. Topic: Madhav Varma II. By the middle of the 5th century, the dynasty began its imperial expansion under its most efficient ruler Madhav Varma II, who ruled for nearly half a century. The reign of Madhav Varma, c. 440 c. 460, was a golden age in the history of the Vishnukundans. It was during this period the small Vishnukundan dynasty rose to imperial heights. A princess of the then powerful ruling family of the Deccan the Vakatakas was given in marriage to Madhav Varma's son, Vikramendra Varma. This alliance gave them great power and made it easy for them to extend their influence to the east coast and vanquishing the petty chieftains lingering on in that area. Madhav Varma II led his arms against Ananda Gotrikas who were ruling over Gunter, Tenali and Angale, probably enjoying subordinate position under the Pallavas of Kanchipuram. After occupying these areas from the Ananda Gotrikas, Madhav Varma II made Amarapura modern Amaravati his capital. Keeping in view the constant threat from the Pallavas, he created an outpost to check their activities and appointed his son, Deva Varma and after his death the grandson Madhav Varma III as its viceroy. Madhav Varma II next turned his attention against the Vengi kingdom which was under the Salankayanas. The Vengi region was annexed. The Godavari tract became part of the Vishnukundan territory. After these conquests the capital might have been shifted to Bezwada Vijayawada, a more central location than Amarapura. These extensive conquests entitle him to the title of the Lord of Dakshinapatha southern country. After these various conquests Madhav Varma performed many Asvamedha, Rajasua and other Vedic sacrifices. Successors of Madhav Varma II The fortunes of the Vishnukundans were at a low point during the reign of next ruler Vikramendra Varma I The next two and half decades also experienced the constant strife and dynastic struggles during the reign of Indra Bhadaraka Varma Though Indra Bhadaraka could not withstand the hostile Kalinga subordinate, Indra Varma and lost his life in battle. The Vishnukundans lost their Kalinga possessions north of the Godavari. 
Topic: <laughs> Vikramendra Varma II. With the accession of Vikramendra Varma II 555 the fortunes of the Vishnukundan family were restored. To have an immediate access to the Kalinga region, he shifted his capital from Bezwada to Lenduluru Motam Dendaluru in the West Godavari district. He repulsed the attack of the Pallava ruler Simavarman. He was successful enough to restore the fortunes of the Vishnukundans in the Kalinga region. His son Govinda Varma II enjoyed a comparatively short period of rule 569 to 573. Topic: <laughs> Govinda Varma II. The Vishnukundan Empire set about again to imperial expansion and cultural prosperity under its able ruler Jansariya Madhav Varma IV 573 to 621. This prudent king spent his early years of rule in consolidating his position in Vengi. The later part of his reign is marked by wars and annexations. In his 37th regnal year, he suppressed the revolt of his subordinate chief the Durjaya Prithvi Maharaja in Guttadivishya modern Ramachandrapuram in the East Godavari district. Madhav Varma IV had to face the Shalukyan onslaught in his last years of rule. By about 616, Palakeshin II and his brother Kuba Vishnuvardhana conquered Vengi from the Vishnukundans and the Pithapuram area from their subordinate Durjayas. In 621 in his 48th regnal year, Madhava crossed the Godavari probably to oust the Shalukas from his territories. However he lost his life on the battlefield. His son Manchana Bhadaraka also might have been expelled by the Shalukas. Thus the Vishnukundan rule was brought to a close by 624. Vishnukundan country They had three important cities, near Aluru, Amaravati and Puranasingam. Administration For administrative convenience, the empire was divided into a number of rashtras and vishayas. Inscriptions refer to Palki Rashtra, Karma Rashtra, Gudadi Vishaya, etc. Madhav Varma III appointed members of the royal family as viceroys for various areas of the kingdom. The king was the highest court of appeal in the administrator of justice. The Vishnukundan rulers established various kinds of punishments for various crimes. They were known for their impartial judgment and high sense of justice. Army Their army consisted of traditional fourfold divisions Elephants Chariots Cavalry Infantry The Hostikosa was the officer in charge of elephant forces and the Viracosa was the officer in charge of land forces. These officers issued even grants on behalf of the kings. Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> There may have been well-organized administrative machinery for collection of land revenue. Agrahara villages enjoyed tax exemptions. Sixteen types of coins of the Vishnukundan rulers have been found by archaeologists. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religion All the records of the Vishnukundans and the kings prior to the Madhav Varma II seem to be patrons of Hinduism. From the time of accession of Madhav Varma II, an aggressive self-assertion of the Vedic Brahmanism occurred. Elaborate Vedic ceremonies like Rajasua, Purushameda, Sarvameda and Aswameda were undertaken. The celebration of all these sacrifices represents the traditional spirit of the Brahmanical revival. Some of the rulers referred to themselves as Parama Mahavaras. The inscriptions refer to their family deity Sri Parvata Swami. The names of rulers like Madhav Varma and Govinda Varma show their Vaishnavite leanings. Thus both the Hindu sects of Savism and Vaishnavism might have received equal patronage from them. <laughs> <laughs> Literature The Vishnukundans were also great patrons of learning. They established colleges for Vedic learning. 
Learned Brahmins were encouraged by gifts of lands and colleges were established for the propagation of Vedic studies. Indra Bhadaraka established many schools for imparting education on Vedic literature. Performance of several elaborate Vedic ceremonies by Madhav Varma is evidence of the faith of the rulers in Brahmanism and popularity of Vedic learning with the people during this period. Some of the Vishnukundan kings were credited with authorship of several books. Vikramendra Varma I was described as Mahakavi, great poet in a record. Further, an incomplete work on Sanskrit poetics called Janasraya Chando Vichati was attributed to Madhav Varma IV, who bore the title of Janasraya. Sanskrit enjoyed royal patronage. <laughs> Art and architecture Being great devotees of Shiva, the Vishnukundans seem to have been responsible for construction of a number of cave temples dedicated to Shiva. The cave structures at Bezwada, Vijayawada, Mogaurahapuram, Undavali Caves and Bhairavakanda were dated to this period. Though some of these cave temples were attributed to the Pallava Mahendra Varman I, the emblems found on the caves and the areas being under the rule of the Vishnukundans during this period clearly show that these were contributions of the Vishnukundans. The big four-storied cave at Undavali and the eight cave temples in Bhairavakanda in Nellar district show however clear resemblances with the architecture of Pallava Mahendra Varman's period. See also Vakataka Salankayana Eastern Chalukya History of India <laughs>